I was just going to ask, after doing all this, do you want to have kids? <laughs> um, you know, I, we've never, we, we don't know, we really don't know. I feel like um, we love kids, we love our friends' kids. Um, our lives are so crazy. I've been on um, a plane every day for the last three weeks, and um, it's, it's hard to know how that would fit in, but uh, I, also, I also think, you know, that might happen. I don't know. Um, ending from from the beginning, from really from that first table read, um, and uh, Adam and I believed in it. I felt like I'm not sure what the message would be if they ended up estranged, and we sort of left the theater worrying that we ruined this child's life. Um, <laughs> didn't feel like real, uh, real up or a real great, um, you know. I, I mean, I think sort of the. The premise of the selfish singles thinking they can have it all and beat the system and avoid complications and avoid the, the compromises and, and messier parts of life, you know, there needs to sort of be a lesson and there needs to be consequences. And I don't actually see the ending as riding off into the sunset. I, you know, let's see how that night goes. And it's, I, I think it's going to be a long road for them still. Um, I think they're sort of beginning again at the end of the film and it may or may not work and might be, uh, continue to be complicated, but I didn't think that, um, do you mean the ending, and specifically them coming together, not the, the language in the ending, <laughs> which is another divisive, uh, you know, uh, point, but uh, I hope I answered your question. Are you going to do a sequel? <laughs> um, I don't know what we call that, kids with friends. I don't know um, what that would be, but I'm, I'll take suggestions. Uh, thank you. Um, what was it like? Uh, you had a lot of little kids to direct. Uh, how well did they take direction, and how many takes did they you have to do for for some of these? Uh, complicated looking scenes. Yeah, um, you know, we, we got really lucky for the most part, considering what a disaster it could have been. <laughs> um, but there were a few days that, you know, that were, were dark days on our set <laughs> because of the kids. And, you know, mostly, for me, it was a lesson. It was, it was really a window into the world of parents on some level because, you know, it's, it's the kids will do whatever they want when they want and, and nothing else. So, if they don't feel like doing what you're doing, you really just have to, to wait it out, do something else, frame them out of the shot, come back, play a game with them, like put pants on your head, like try and make them laugh. You felt a lot like a, like a circus performer, <laughs> like trying to get them excited. And in particular, the, the two scenes in the end, the older, uh, the, the three-year-old who was playing two and a half at the end, we double cast that with two different actors, not twins, I couldn't find twins who could say the lines and, and look like the younger version of Joe in most of the movie. So we just figured we'll shoot these scenes with two of them and one of them will give us a performance. Like, and, and, you know. So on that day, um, we had the tantrum scene to get and the scene with the photo album where, where we put him to bed. And I stupidly thought that that bed scene would be easier to start with because the tantrum, I just felt like, let's wait till they're good and tired and and tantrum E, and um, that was a terrible mistake because no child wants to get into bed ever, I guess, and, and definitely not in the middle of the day in front of strangers with like large cameras. Um, so both children melted down full on, you know, mommy, I want to go home, why can't I go home? <laughs> Devastated, like screaming, sad, I started to cry. I was like, I, I'm gonna be carted away like to child <laughs> services, like we'll scar these kids for life. Um, so that was a, that was a bad day, and and then we had to shoot that whole scene without without the kids, just handheld, just me and Adam here talking to the kids, and um, and we had to wait till one of them was like in a good mood, um, and that was a lesson too. Just that one moment they were so unhappy, and I thought, you know, I destroyed their lives, and then the next moment they're like, hey Jennifer, why don't you do that? You know, I mean, it was it was <laughs> such a such a lesson, um, but but no, that that those scenes were. Really hard. Oddly, the tantrum scene was easy. It was like, "Hey, you want to hit Adam and kick the floor?" And like, "Yeah," but but get into bed and say lie. I, you know that that was not of interest. So, it was um, it was a challenge. But everyone, you know, the 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 Joe we had for most of the shoots, Theo, his name is Theo Mitchell, and he was just like. 
the light and the sun on our set. He was this most special, beautiful kid, and we just couldn't wait till he got there every day because he just put everyone in such a great mood, and he was uh, he's probably the best actor in the film. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so, thank you. I was happy to see another film from you. And I'm just curious to know what sort of budget you were working with and financing. Yeah, the question's about the budget. Uh, the budget was low. It was uh, under $10 million. I'm not allowed to say how much under $10 million, but not a small amount under $10 million. <laughs> um, and, you know, every indie film, is it's hard to get off the ground. Money's hard, money's hard in these times especially. Um, <coughs> This one was different from my first two films in that the other two, we raised private equity share by share. So there were many, many, many investors, um, and which is which is longer and harder in a sense, um, but it's also easier in a sense because no one really has a say. Everyone's just a you know visiting and, and wants to give an opinion and come to the premiere, but they're not full on partners with you. Um, this was different in that we sort of fortunately found Red Granite Pictures and they had been reading scripts for two years looking for their first project um, and they wanted to do this one so they were all in and I'd never had that experience before where, where someone kind of wrote the whole check and wanted to be uh, a big part of it. So that was um, faster in some ways and then also more complicated because you have partners in every way um, and, that's, and you already have so many people working on it. So it was sort of very, very fortunate and, and posed a different set of challenges too. Uh, we were lucky enough to workshop the screenplay uh, for, for a long weekend at a place called New York Stage and Film, which is sort of my summer creative home. It's a great place on the Vassar campus uh, during the summers where sort of playwrights go to work out their material before it comes to New York. Shanley does all of his stuff there before it comes to New York, for example. And New York, which was dynamite. Um, Thank you. Directing added to your resume. Do you have uh, particular uh, directions you want to go, or you want to just try to keep doing everything? <laughs> I You're know, right? I'm all over the map. All. What's yeah. happened? Um, <laughs> I, I, you know, all of the, I, I thought I was gonna just be on stage my whole life. That's all I really ever planned for or wanted to do. Um, it was ironic that I went to LA and did a sitcom to get to, on to Broadway. <laughs> you know, it was such a strange sort of a, you know, you never quite know where your path will lead you. And Kissing Jessica Stein was um, just organically came to pass. I was I was on a show and I had two months off and um, and we were gonna put up this night of sketches and then it became this little play that we, we ran for three nights in the basement of a church and that was that. It was like nine nine seat theater and I got back to LA and, and my agent called and said all these studios had called to make it into a movie and I was like, huh? What? We just invited our friends and family. I don't understand how that happened. So I really feel like the indie film thing just happened to me. I didn't really uh, ever think about it, and I still feel like I'm learning um, every day and every second and trying to rise to, to new challenges. But it's also been exciting, especially as a woman, just to have a, a bit of say in your creative destiny. And, and you know, we happen to be at a moment this year in particular where so many women are doing that. It's a really cool time between, you know, Tina's success on 30 Rock and Kristen and Annie with Bridesmaids and, you know, Miranda July, Julie Delpy, Lena Dunham, Rashida Jones just wrote something that she's in. There are five movies at Sundance that have women writing for themselves. Um, and it's, uh, it's an exciting thing to feel this wave of people trying to kind of change the reality and have more stories that, that, that speak to women and more roles for women. And um, I'm excited about that. I don't want to like let that go entirely. I mean, I've only made one movie every five years, so I'm not exactly <laughs> prolific, but I'm going to keep trying to, you know, mix it up. Well, thanks so much. Um, This opens next weekend, Please, March. Yeah. yeah, and it's going to be in DC. You'll see. You'll see. Um, ads for it soon. Thanks.